If you're considering living out of a vehicle, there are some things you might want to know beforehand. In this video, I am sharing five things I wish I'd known and what I do now that I know what I know. Number one, I wish I would have known how hard it is on your body. I am somebody who loves driving especially in the United States. <laughs> I have not always lived in the United States and driving here to me is so calm and everybody seems to follow the rules and that is one thing I really love about it. And I usually don't mind long distances. I put on a podcast or music or even just sit alone with my thoughts for hours on end and really am one of those weird people who enjoys driving. That being said, I did not really realize how much driving long, long hours would take a toll on my body. Now I tend to get out to stretch when I see a rest area. Whether or not I have to go to the bathroom, I get out, walk around. Mainly I just want to get up and move even if it's just stretching and bending over a little bit so that I can feel my legs again. <laughs> the other thing that I do is when I am parked in an area, I go out every day that I can and move in some way, whether it's a long walk, like if I can do a hike, I'll do a hike. Or if I do some form of stretching outside on my rooftop or I have a yoga mat and do something like that. Or one of the reasons that I made my van this way with this little extra room here is that I can actually do some exercises and stretching inside of my van, believe it or not. One day I will get brave enough and show you guys what I actually do, but I do use this space quite often and can do uh, arms, abs, legs. And when I am not in an area that I can go on a walk or something like a Walmart parking lot or in town somewhere, you can look for a mall or actually I have walked around for an hour in Walmart just pretending to shop. <laughs> Sometimes I pick up a few things. I'll fill up my water or I'll go get something to eat or drink. Then I will make an exercise out of it and walk around for a while just because it is important for me to know that I have gotten some of those valuable steps in. Something else I wish I'd known is how much I would be dealing with waste and mess. And it's not just garbage, it is your human waste. You really need to be able to be comfortable with that. You will be carrying it around sometimes for, uh, depending on what you're doing, for a few days before you can dump it at a site or get rid of the garbage. So you really need to think of how comfortable you are with something like that. One thing that is very valuable is to have a waste bin that has a dedicated space in your van. I have found this. This just locks on to my cooler area here, this ottoman. I put some screws in it and I can just lift this up and put my garbage in there. It's out of the way. It looks decent as a garbage can and so I don't mind having it there. I have also shown you these compostable food waste bags for scraps that you will have from your food sources. So this is really good because you can just keep bagging things and rolling it up and very simple, but it keeps bugs and smell down very efficiently actually. And we've talked about this before, but to keep down smells, I have these horse pellets and I will bag things up in compostable bags. I will keep my urine and poop <laughs> separate and I will dispose of this daily or whenever I can. It's very easy. I can even bring it inside somewhere if I need to, but most of the time I can pour it and water a tree or something like that out wherever I am. And if I am boondocking somewhere where I cannot dispose of these, 
I will simply store them in this container. It's from the dollar store, but this can carry quite a bit if I am in an area where I cannot dispose of my number two. And that has served me pretty well because it also doubles as a pea jar if I also need to store extra pea that I cannot dispose of. I also have a little vacuum cleaner that is a USB rechargeable one. And it's really nice because I can do the little messes until I get to a gas station that has a vacuum or a place where I wash my car and it has a vacuum. I can pick up those little messes here and there and it makes a lot of difference. And if you have a van that isn't carpeted but has uh, the wood or the vinyl, then you will want to have a broom or something that you can sweep it out because I know people who are constantly sweeping out their van. And cleaning up after yourself is something you just need to get into a routine of probably more than you did when you were in a stationary environment. It is so important, so important that I have actually talked about it two times before I have videos that you might want to check out because for your sanity and everybody else's, you will want to make sure you have a place for everything and are just able to keep things neat and tidy when you are basically needing a restful place and you don't want a mess everywhere. So that is how I deal with it. I try to keep it as clean as possible, as much as possible. Garbage is actually easier to deal with when you are not out boondocking. I manage that by, first of all, trying not to have a lot of garbage or things that will produce garbage in the first place. But otherwise, I am just constantly getting rid of it. So when I am at a gas station or when I go to a Walmart or when I go to a rest area, there are always garbage cans everywhere and utilize them. Usually my waste is a small bag anyway, and that is very easily disposed of. For human waste, either you look for where you would normally put dog waste, or you can double bag it and put it in a dump or the dump stations that they have for waste in areas that are designated for that. Something else I wish I'd known is how much downtime there really is because you may not have cell service all the time or internet and you are not always in beautiful spots where there is something that you can do outdoors and you will have to figure out what you do in those times. Something I do is to try and have some meaningful or mindful activities that I do every day. And that can be anything from planning a run to a store or somewhere that I know that I have to do an errand to pick something up or drop something off or get food or water. And remember that those things that are usually easy tasks take a little bit more time. Something else is that I have plenty of little activities that I can do by myself, or if I'm traveling with other people, some games or puzzles or things like that, that are just fun to sit around, whether you're in your vans or outside that you can plan to do that will occupy your mind. So I will do some Sudoku puzzles or crossword puzzles. I also usually pick out a book or two that I am reading on my iPhone on Kindle or as a physical book. And I don't have too many of those because I don't have room for it, but there are things that I like to just browse through and learn from. Some books will be fiction, some books will be things that I learn 
about I have this book for instance on herbal medicines that's a interest that I have a hobby that I want to learn more about and so I will read up on these kinds of things and have those around I also will pick a project that I might have in the van that I have thought about doing for a long time something else I do is plan ahead places that I want to go, things that I am dreaming about or thinking about, and write those things down and actually set goals for how I'm going to accomplish some of those things. To me, that makes looking ahead a lot less stressful. And one other thing that is really, really important is that I will do some self-care things. A manicure, a pedicure, or a facial, a mask for my hair, or something like that. So that if I am bored and I don't know what to do, I can definitely see what I can do to take care of myself a little bit more. And it's amazing how a little bit of lotion on your body or a mask in your hair or face can make everything just seem better. <laughs> So I would recommend that. I guess something else I wish I'd known is how much prices and costs vary from place to place and state to state. And I really just was not aware that that would affect me so much in terms of gas prices and food costs. And if you are not prepared to be sleeping at a Walmart, if you can't find free camping, you might have to stay at an Airbnb or pay for a hotel or something like that. So all of those things you need to take into consideration. Luckily, I did make a budget and I planned very much for those types of contingencies beforehand, but I really am glad that I did because one month may look way different than another month depending on where I am and what I'm doing or have to do just depending on the circumstances. So definitely plan for that. Have a budget. I have a budget. It's one of those activities that I do daily so that I know exactly where I stand. It was something that my dad taught me. He's like, if you know the parameters within which you have to swim, then you feel free. If you don't, then you are always feeling like you are swimming against the stream. So I look at at that every day and I know exactly what I have and what I need and can plan for that accordingly. I am also fortunate enough to still have an income and that helps a lot but if I do find that I have to be careful in a given month then I simply cut back. Another thing is to prioritize what I am willing or not willing to spend more on. I for instance will make my own coffee every day rather than getting coffee at a coffee shop every day. I mean, there'll be days when I can splurge on that, but if I day to day make my own, I save a lot that way. I am willing to spend more on organic food over going to restaurants, for example, and I will make my own food that way and know that it is healthy and delicious and nutritious. That way, when I do go out to a restaurant, I do not feel bad when I am spending that money because I have saved it up until that point. And last but not least, I wish I'd known how much I would miss modern conveniences. And by that, I mean when you are in a stationary home, you have a bathroom, you have unlimited water, you have unlimited electricity. You don't have to think about those things every single day, every minute of the day. Something that I have done in order to manage the inconveniences a little bit more is to set up systems for myself that make all of those things easier. So I have a system for how I get water and how I use water. I have a system for how I get power and how I use power. I have a system for how I manage going to the bathroom. All of those things make a difference in the long run because I have actually over time found that those are as easy, if not easier, than I had before. And so it helps me not miss those conveniences 
as much. It is always nice, of course, to have them. And when I have them, I'm very thankful for that. But it really does help me to manage that. And I manage some of the stress of not being in a stationary environment by Again, in number three, it's one of the things that I do when I plan is where am I going to go and where am I going to sleep that night? And I usually have one or two or three contingencies just in case my first idea doesn't work out. And that helps me so much lower the stress of having to deal with that on a day to day basis because I've already been planning it and I have looked at it as a fun activity that I do for myself rather than a stressful activity that I do as an afterthought. I know it can be overwhelming trying to figure out all the things you need to know before you go to live out of a vehicle, but hopefully now that you know the things I wish I'd known and what I do about them, it makes it a little less stressful and you have a little more confidence in doing that. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.